Okay, I think we're gonna get started. Um, thanks everyone for coming. And today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about Ingress. And the title of this talk is Ingress, Your Router, Your Rules. I'm Jared Dillon. Uh, I'm here with Deus. And if you wanna learn more about any of this or Helm, Steward, Workflow, any of it, come talk to us at our booth. Uh, and I spelled my Twitter handle wrong out there. So uh, just drop off the last two letters and uh, it's just at Justice Rise. Don't know where that came from. So, but what I really want to talk today about is not necessarily ingress. I want to talk about container networking at scale. And I'm going to break this down and get a little specific. Um, and what I mean by container networking. By container networking, I don't just talk about your web services. We all think that we're running, you know, websites and APIs and all sorts of front end services. And that's great. These are all very normal things. But I'm also talking about networking of different workflows. This is Codacir out of Amsterdam, and they deploy regularly hundreds of services uh, for all their students. I'm also talking about deploying games on top of Kubernetes, game servers, Minecraft servers. Uh, if you look at the Helm charts, we've got Minecraft, Factorio, a whole bunch of stuff. And I'm also talking about games at scale. If you're familiar with Niantic works with Pokemon Go. They're built on top of Google Cloud Platform and doing it at huge scales on not just traditional services that we think of when we're going out to deploy on top of Kubernetes. So what do I mean by scale? I'm talking a little bit just more than I have a billion pods across a thousand nodes. And we are talking a little bit about that. Being able to scale out is a, is a very important Kubernetes goal. But this is a very much mechanical scaling, especially if you're a stateless application. It's pretty easy to do. I just scale my deployment up to a billion container pods and I'm good to go, as long as I have the nodes for it. What I'm really talking about also here is the logical scaling of all of our different services. It should be really easy to add a new service into production and not face a lot of pain in doing so. And we should be able to just as easily scale our services, our deployments, you know, our different notions of our application just as easily as our different pods. So I want to take a break before we get deep into code and we start looking and tearing apart the whole point of this talk, which is ingress controllers, and talk to you a little bit about Kubernetes concepts and how you might see those concepts today. So who here has used uh, ingress at all? Great, a lot of you. Who here, has used, wrote, who here has written their own ingress controller? Okay, a couple people. We'll, we'll get there. Who thinks very much in this model right now? Where if I'm going for an L7 load balancer, this is probably a lot of Google, Kubernetes, Google, Google Container Engine users. If I need an L3 load balancer, well, I'm gonna stand up a service, and I'll get that. And if I need an L7 HTTP load balancer, I need TLS, I need vhost routing rules, all that. Well, I'm going to reach for a level seven one. And if you've used it a lot, this is probably how you're thinking about that whole system at the moment. And I'd like to change that for the purposes of this talk. So I want to revisit some of these. I'm sure you're all sick of looking at manifests. I'm sure you're sick of seeing pods for the 15th time today. But I want you to look at these maybe in a slightly different mindset than a lot of the other talks that you might go to. In e these rules expire at the end of this talk, so don't go home and, and start you know, quoting what I tell you in this talk as far as this goes. So I want to think of a pod as a single internal resource, and I think you can think of that no matter what like that, right? We have a, basically a one static bundle for our site. We have one API server process. We have one Flash Media server process representing a video stream. We have a single Redis process. We have a single Postgres instance. Well, what we're really talking about for this talk is I'm mapping a virtual IP to a singular resource. And it's important that this set in containers is entirely isolated as one unit and really thinks about itself. And it doesn't care how traffic gets to it. So if something comes in the IP, Kube proxy gets the traffic there. I don't care beyond that. And because you haven't looked at enough manifests today, here's a pod manifest, not fully filled out, but you get the, you get the gist. This is just a Redis pod and uh, pretty easy to fill in. That's not the interesting part of this talk. So here's where things start to get weird. 
Who here just generally throws a type load balancer on their service and calls it a day? Just goes about their day. Couple. Okay. Yeah. I. You know, when I'm testing things, I do. I do too. And the for this for what we're talking about today, I really want to get away from that idea of let's just slap a load balancer on it and call and be done. I really want to start thinking of services kind of as a semantically related set. Uh, and that's really what they are. If you think about how labels and selectors work, you have you know your phone app application, API server, whatever. But you have a, a virtual IP that's selecting over a set of pods that match a certain set of labels, right? Uh, and again, and this is this is where uh, things change when you start talking about the uh, or in my experience, what a lot of people talk about with a service is a service is, isn't necessarily concerned with routing. Some people use it that way. Some people expose external traffic via service, and that's great. Uh, and it has its uses, but it's really that semantic set and, and just a, a singular grouping that's a representation of our resource. And it cares about every member of that set. And again, lots of manifests, so here's, here's that service. Now we're here what I really want to talk about, and that is our ingress resource. And an ingress is a mapping of external traffic to virtual resources. It is the rules by which we take inbound network traffic and map it to a set of services. So here we're starting to talk about really networking primitives, right? Virtual hosts, external IP addresses, domain names, load balancer rules. And this could be a physical load balancer. We'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But you have some sort of external identifier that is potentially physical mapping onto all of your virtual resources. So before we get into the meat of that and talk about, about in depth what you can do with ingress controllers and, and really how to go move towards your own ingress controller, we're gonna walk through the standard configurations on an ingress resource and we'll return to this. But you can do a lot of things with them. You can, out of the box, without even writing your own config. And things like TLS, things like path-based routing, things like virtual host routing based on domains. Uh, with your own metadata, you can come up with as many crazy custom rules as you want. So here's a quick TLS ingress resource, right? We have a secret, that's our certs. Uh, and you can also use something like Cube Cert Manager by Kelsey Hightower to uh, get at those certs with Let's Encrypt. And you create an ingress and point it at a secret and point it at your back end. And now you have a router that ties up your TLS certs and, and your application, and you're done. You can do much the same with virtual host routing. So you can specify multiple rules in, inside of a single virtual host. So here we have some sort of billing API. And we have a master or a production, and we have a staging API both backing up to different services, but semantically also part of the same ingress. And so this is captured up, up in some sort of upstream router that'll then take this manifest and expose it. We can do the same thing with path-based path routing. So it's all pretty clear. Uh, those of you on laptops are probably taking those and copying, pasting them off my screen. And you create the ingress resource and maybe Maybe you, know, you type it all in and, and run it, and great, I'm about to start sending traffic everywhere. This is awesome. I'm going to just start creating ingresses left and right. And nothing happens. Unless you're on GKE. GKE users, uh, none of this applies. You're going to get a load balancer, and it's going to be great. But if you're on Minikube, if you're running your own cluster, and you haven't thought about this problem before, and you just go create an ingress, like nothing happens. And you're sitting there, what the hell? Like, well, I'm just going to go use a service. Like that'll that'll be fine. Like screw this thing, uh, and I'm just going to type in type load balancer, and it'll it'll work. I've got I've got nginx already set up and going. Well, that's not why we're here, and there's some problems with that. And the problem isn't just that you created an inject. Uh, the problem isn't Kubernetes is broken. So, what is ingress really? If we're talking about creating an ingress resource, it's a little bit different than just creating a service resource and things are done. Your ingress resource really are just the rules for routing your inbound traffic towards your cluster resources. And this is really important. 
it, it says nothing about how those rules should be applied. This is a very declarative API. It's not imperative in any way. And so I've just set up the rules, and most of Kubernetes works that way, so it should be pretty familiar. So before we get to the solution, why wouldn't I just use a service? I mean, we talk about how easy it is and, and just be done with it. And you can use a service. That's fine. Uh, but a lot of use cases end up where you bump up against the, the tattered edges of what, what a service can do pretty quickly. And that's because services are pretty limited. They're tied to the entire controller manager's lifecycle. And their routing rules are attached to that lifecycle of the service. I delete the service, it's gone. If I'm deploying a Helm chart, who's using Helm in here? A lot of you, okay. Check out Helm when you're done, and you'll see some Helm later on. But uh, if, I'm, if I'm packaging up my entire application as a Helm service, and I, have a, and I have a service resource in there, and I go to delete or migrate, my networking is inherently tied to that chart. I change things around, and I've now lost my Elastic IP. I've now lost my, my load balancer. And I have to make DNS changes. I have all sorts of problems. Ingress rules stand to decouple that's that, those networking problems from your application. And most importantly of this, we have what's called an ingress controller. And the ingress controller is a control loop that manages these rules and applies them in, in certain ways depending on what you're doing. So you have to have this thing running in your cluster. Well, services do that, sure. Uh, but ingresses have some really big advantages over them, and I think I've alluded to a couple of them. But with services, you get a CAN service type of load balancer, node IP, cluster IP, and whatever else the Kubernetes authors add in future versions. And this is really primitive, round-robin based load balancing. A lot of people are probably OK with that, but there's other use cases for, for doing things like AB deploys and bleeding traffic. And you may want to do that at the network level. You may not always want to do that via rolling deploy, especially if you're beginning to test out different types of applications, different features, you're flipping feature flags. Uh, you, you may not want to just rely on the deployment mechanism to do that for you. So we have our ingress controller. And instead, this runs separately from your Kubernetes master. And all these advantages are here. And, and you can deploy them all separately. But the big thing here is that, and I may have gotten myself out of order here, it's bring your own controller. You, if, if you stand up an ingress resource and nothing happens, it's because you didn't have an ingress controller. And typically, Kubernetes installs don't ship with them. Google Container Engine does. There's a couple third-party services that do. But typically, you just won't have that out of the box. So there's, no, some, there's more upfront work, but you are able to write your own and define your own rules with that. And so when we create an ingress resource for the first couple times and nothing happens, it's because we didn't have an ingress controller to apply our rules to the networking fabric uh, uh, above our cluster. So it's important to note that this role runs separately from your Kubernetes master, meaning you can have one or a thousand different ingress controllers depending on what you're doing. So let's deploy something. We're going to deploy an application called Croc Hunter. Uh, this has shamelessly been redistributed from uh, another uh, colleague of mine, uh, Lachlan Evenson. And uh, you can talk to him about Kubernetes and the Crocs you're, he's hunting. And it's built as a Helm chart. If you haven't checked out Helm, please, please do check it out. I use it heavily in the rest of this talk. We're going to deploy it now. And hope the live demo gods are happy with me. Uh, is this all visible in the back? Great, OK. So I'm going to do a Helm install, our charts, our croc hunter. And one thing I'm going to do real quick before we do that is I'm going to disable our ingress. Now, just to throw some charts at you, these are going to be a little bit more dense than a normal chart just because it is templated with Helm. But the important thing is here, note that we have a standard deployment that you'd expect. And we have a service. Whoops. And we have a service. Nowhere in the service do we say, OK, it's, it's a type of anything. And nowhere do we expose this to the internet on the node or anything. We're just going to create a service that bundles up all of the replicas of this deployment 
and represents them as a single, that single semantic grouping I was talking about. So we're gonna do a Helm install of that Croc Hunter chart. And here in a moment, we'll have it live on a cluster. So if I do a, a cube cuddle, get pods, watch, and type it right. We'll see we have our, uh, it's, it's important to know that Helm gave us a random name or a slug, random slug for our application and gave us three pods under that. So we have a nice running application. If we're inside of our cluster, we could go to a steer qual dot, uh, default dot cluster dot service dot local or service to cluster local and we'll get it. But how do we get to that from the outside? We don't have an external IP so we can't do that. Uh, we could expose it via type load balancer, of course, and it would create, this is a Google container engine cluster, so it would create a load balancer for us. But let's try it with this ingress way. So here's our ingress resource for this. Again, fairly templated out. But the important thing here is we have our rules, and under here we just have a single path of slash, and that points out towards our service. So unlike a service, we're not pointing at pods, we're not selecting on pods, we actually specify directly the service that we're gonna use. We're not doing a selector and we're not doing a set like we would with a service. So I'm gonna turn this on in my values.yaml. And I'm gonna do a Helm upgrade on our austere qual. and change the name real quick. So I'm not running the default GKA load balancer inside of this. I'm actually using the ingress we're gonna be creating here in the next few minutes. And it's an Nginx based load balancer that gives me a sub bit different subdomain routing rules. So let's go here to crockhunter.kates.jared.org. If I can select. And it's live, it's up and running. You all can go there, you can spend the rest of this talk if you want, hunting crocodiles. Uh, but you may wanna watch what's happening instead of, I mean it's addicting, but uh, it, it, I'll, I'll keep it up the rest of the day. So, okay, that was cool. We got traffic to it. Uh, by using an ingress, and more importantly, after we define that role, it was picked up by some sort of ingress controller. So let's walk through writing a basic Ingi uh, Nginx controller. If you're not familiar with Go, uh, that's okay. Uh, I've kept this pretty simple and austere, and we'll, we'll quickly talk through everything. Uh, it reads well enough. So the first thing we do, uh, as I say it reads well enough, and then throw a bunch of Nginx on the screen, uh, is define a quick Nginx template that basically takes everything up and wraps it uh, out the, the results we want. From there, all we need to do is use the standard Kubernetes client to get our a handle on our ingress resources and make a client and just start parsing them for whatever namespaces we want. Notice right above me on the right, we, we use api.namespace all. You could actually use this to filter down by different namespaces if you only wanted to do this for a single namespace or, or you wanted to do other interesting patterns. All right, cool, we, uh, we have Kubernetes API, we got a template. Let's go ahead and start our Nginx process. So in this, in this contrived world, we're gonna have a Docker file that contains both this binary and an Nginx process that we're then gonna deploy somewhere. So, we're gonna assume we have a handle on Nginx somewhere and we'll solve that in the Docker file and call it a day. Next, we're gonna go ahead and search for all of our ingress resources. The rate limiter is there so we don't crush our Kubernetes API server. Uh, and it's a pretty standard pattern. Uh, I think it's part of the standard library actually in Kubernetes. Um, and then we list out all of our ingresses. No matter the namespace, we just grab all of our ingresses and we check it against some known list that we have, and we create an Nginx configuration to match. 
This is about as simple as it gets. There's much more complicated tra uh, ingress schemes and ingress controllers. Traffic's one of them. There's a whole bunch of options. But uh, you know, just keeping this very, very simple. And then we're going to reload our config. This is the, the gist of the entire basic alpha demo uh, Nginx controller that's provided in the Kubernetes contrib repo. So it's about 80 lines of code, and you have the very basics of a, of a working ingress controller that you can sp spin up to do as much as you want. Uh, the, the one that uh, traffic provides or traffic provides is incredibly robust. Uh, there's also very robust ones for Nginx. And because this is all driven by your own code, there's no reason you couldn't control a physical load balancer as well. And, and that, that's really the beauty of Ingress is that you define kind of the rules of what your Ingress controller looks like. So if we look at just what, ha what just happened, we get an Ingress resource, resource that's picked up. We get a virtual host definition. And I can access my, my Croc Hunter service. All right, so you might say, OK, my, my infrastructure is a snowflake. Uh, we do things like uh, per branch deploys that give our QA team the chance to review this in advance. And we have all sorts of interesting, serious things that uh, you know, if you go read Phoenix Project, like we're, we're way past there. Great. Go ahead and embrace that snowflake. You, you are able to do that. Uh, you know, building an ingress controller is really easy, and everyone in this room could do it. Uh, you don't even necessarily need to write it in Go. It could be in any language. It can be whatever you want. But you are able to craft it to your own needs. All right, so here's the challenge. Uh, and because I didn't want to test the live demo guards too much, we have our ingress controller up and running already. But we want to deploy Croc Hunter in a slightly different way. We want to do it. Based on our CI pipeline setup, we and, and really get it into a setup where our developers can make as much progress as possible uh, without being deterred, and then get that those results to our QA engineers again without being deterred and, and being blocked. So we'll start off. Master is our root domain, and it's open. Uh, we'll ignore the auth rules for the moment, but staging is on a staging subdomain, and it's based on our staging branch. Every pull request we do, or really for this demo, every uh, feature branch we push up will get a feature branch deployment with its own domain. All this controlled by CI, and the developers don't hate themselves at the end. So we're going to need our ingress controller and an ingress. Now, for this, I'm using BuildKite. Uh, we have a couple other options that. Uh, we can show you. Uh, we have some good demos of Jenkins, and really this can fit into whatever CI system you're using. But I've just chosen BuildKite for the purposes of this. So we're going to take and add some stuff into our Croc Hunter app. Uh, we have some typos down here and some issues. And we're on the master branch right now. So I'm going to go ahead and check out. Uh, we'll just call this add kubecon to it. And I'll stash first. So, all right, we're on our feature branch. Now I'm just going to go ahead and make some adjustments. In our handler here. And I'm just going to say, welcome to KubeCon. OK. And now I'm going to do a commit. And we'll add all first. And then we'll push. Now we immediately see in our pipeline, if we come back over, if I push it to the right branch. So I'm going to push our remote branch. There we go. All right, our new remote branch has, has been stood up. And our build is right now running. And we'll go through the mechanics of this afterwards. But this is basically going in and building out our new container and pushing it up somewhere that we can end up using it. So we have our pipeline. It's now going to build. 
Now, while that's happening and while that's building, let's talk a little bit about the structure of this. So I have some steps here that effectively leverage the upgrade ability of Helm uh, combined with our ingress inside of Croc Hunter to do a, an upgrade and an install with, our, with the correct image tag and then potentially with the, rest, the right subdomain. So for each of these branches, I'm creating a new ingress resource that the controller will pick up and deploy a new subdomain to. You can expand upon this and also add, say, like a job to your Helm chart that is a scheduled job, job that will delete your ingress after 24 hours or whatever amount of time you set. The nice thing is, is those options are up to you, and you can keep these simple through a combination of, of these resources. So that's been pushed, and now it's deployed. So now if I go to add kubeconnew.crockhunter.cates.jared.com, we have our new deployment with that update. So the nice thing is here, we were able to do that without building any custom systems, without doing any hard work. We just used the built-in resources that were available to us, and that made things really easy compared to trying to, try to build out these massive you know, deployment pipelines that, that really end up being these, these brutal QA systems. Now we're working just within Kubernetes resources and keeping things much, much more simple. So as a recap, uh, when we talk about a service, we're really talking about defining our resources. And the, the challenge I have here is to not just reach for, if you can help it, a type of load balancer and expose that to the wider world. Rather, think of them as, a, as that grouping and pair them with your application. So when you deploy a, a, an application bundle, deploy it as you know, your deployment, your service, your config map, all of it, and think of that as one unit. And Ingress can sit separately of that. Ingress doesn't have to be part of that unit. Ingress really is about how you expose and route information to that. So, and really what I want to impress upon you is match your routing to your needs. Uh, you know, don't let er someone else decide what routing means for you. Don't just pick something off the shelf and don't be limited into creating these very in insane traffic patterns because you feel like you have to use a service and, and attach it to a type of some sort. This is all built into Kubernetes now for you and it really saves you a lot of trouble and time for that. So thank you very much. My demo ran, ran a little shorter than, than intended, but, uh, or expected. But uh, you know, please come to me. I'll be at a booth. Talk to me about Deus, Kubernetes, uh, all those sorts of things. And uh, again, this is Ingress, your router, your rules. And I'm Jared Dillon. So thank you. And I think we have time for questions, if anyone wants them, or just come up, or whatever. Yes. So let me repeat the question. Uh, you, if you want L7 load balancing between your pods, what would I recommend? Is that correct? Uh, so it depends. Uh, if you're using Google Container Engine, I would just recommend the uh, build. And you're talking about single service, multiple pods. Even multiple services on the same route? Yeah, are you talking about like? Or are you talking about different? Do you want load balance between services or pods? Between services on the same VLAN. You would probably have to set up a, a, an Nginx config to cover that. And then uh, you, you could do it with Nginx. You just make sure, you know, make sure you have some sort of metadata in there so that they all get picked up into the same uh, server back or the same backends. And then that should cover it. Hack the Nginx one? The yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's yeah, you, you could absolutely either fork one of the, like an existing one and do it pretty, I imagine, pretty easily. Uh, you would just have to adjust the template. I can walk through it with you, too. Uh, that's a good question. How is the Deus router different? So the Deus router currently is not an ingress controller. It just sits separately. Uh, I believe it's on a roadmap to uh, enable it so that you could use it as an ingress controller if you want to. Um, but we have, we, there's a lot of plans around that. So 
Right now, it just sits as a pod with a service in front of it, and then it routes from there. Yeah, it works entirely on metadata. So uh, basically, if you're using Deus Router, you use all uh, annotations on your service, and that'll configure things, you know, TLS, and uh, and also headers that get that get sent through. So it's more advanced in that sense, but it, it right now ingress resources aren't, aren't uh, or it's not based off of ingress resources. Yes. Uh, question was, what's my approach to HA ingress controllers? Uh, I right now prefer to run a single uh, replica of a single ingress controller. If uh, one pattern I've, been, I've had some success with is doing namespace filtering on those. So I will set up one per namespace that I care about and then manage that deployment separately. So I might have five ingress controllers for my dip five different environments. Yes. Sure, that's a great question. Uh, how does how does Ingress handle non-HTTP traffic such as uh, SNI-based traffic or Telnet or UDP or any other protocol that's that's not you know, that standard? What we're thinking about. So that's dependent on what you're using for a controller. So Nginx supports UDP uh, uh, load balancing as well, and you could write something for it, but the resource doesn't change too much. You would probably would not end up using much in the way of the standard rules and configuring via metadata uh, for your resource and then picking up that resource within whatever your controller software is. Uh, but the configuration options right now are very much geared towards L7. Any other questions? All right, thanks everyone.